If you think it's safer on the ground than in the air, our next story will prove you wrong. In it, a young woman attempts a dangerous driving stunt, and to add to the danger, her brakes fail at the precise moment she needs them the most. It was the weekend of the Easter Jeep Safari in Moab, Utah. And we'd had such a fun weekend. Now we were ready to go home, but we had one more thing that we wanted to do before we went home. And that was, you know, go on lion's back. The lion's back is uh, a sheer rock outcropping that uh, you can run up and down on. It wasn't anything to do with the Easter Jeep Safari. It is just one of the natural wonders that's located in the area that you can uh, get to. Hang on, Lou, hang on. We'd all kind of watched different people go up and down Lion's Back, and then Tina and Sean decided they wanted to drive their blazer up. first time we drove up, Tina was with me, and the adrenaline was really pumping, and we were both pretty excited. When you're going up lines back, you're just crawling, you're barely moving, because it's so steep. Okay, there they are at top, and then... When you get to the top, it's, it's kind of like a weight's taken off you, and you can kind of relax, because your tent's going up. Then you start down, and, and it's like you want you want to just mash on the brakes and make sure you don't move at all. But you need to just keep a, a steady, even pressure on the brakes. You don't want to lock your tires up. When they finally reached the bottom, Sean asked his wife if she'd like to try driving up the ridge, thinking that she would refuse. To my surprise, she said yes. And so Tina got behind the wheel for a second attempt. When I realized that Tina was driving, call it a, a woman's intuition, but I felt like Tina was not going to come back down that, that hill the same way she went up. Tina didn't really seem to have any problems at all with going up. She did really fine. And uh, when we got to the top, uh, we had to turn around. Tina was kind of scared about that because there's not a whole lot of room to turn around at the top. So I got out of the vehicle and I helped her back and forth and it took a couple of tries to get it turned around. As Tina started down, I knew immediately she was in trouble because her back brake locked up. I told Tina, I said, just ease up on the brakes a little bit. And Tina said, there are no brakes. And at this point, I knew that we were in big trouble. That was probably the hardest few seconds of my life. I don't remember the impact. I remember people were immediately there trying to get us out, and uh, I called Tina's name, and she answered me. I wasn't sure how bad she was hurt or, or where we even were. It all happened so fast. I mean, I thought I was just dreaming. I, it was just a bad dream, and I was going to wake up. And when I opened up my eyes, I knew it wasn't a dream. After the victims had been loaded in the ambulances, that's when I found out that there was a videotape of the accident scene. I received one from a person that was shooting a side angle and also one from a head-on view. And I was able to watch the accident like I was there. And by using that, my investigation concluded uh, that there was no alcohol used while she was driving the vehicle or at any time. 
and they were trying everything humanly possible to slow the vehicle down. I shake every time I see it. I just, it just makes me sick to my stomach knowing that we almost lost our lives. I mean, it could have gone the other way so easily. I learned quite a few lessons from this. Um, but the most important lesson is when you're out four-wheeling, you need to be more observant as to what kind of situation you're getting yourself into. I didn't think about any kind of danger or having to get out of it. If I'd have thought about that, I probably wouldn't have gone up there in the first place. I really believe that we had a guardian angel that day. You know, said it was going to be a bumpy ride, but, you know, we'll get you down as, as easy as we can.